May I come in? Sir? Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sir. Good afternoon. Sir. Please have your seat. Thank you, sir. Kunal. Yes, sir. Kunal, how are you in terms of health? I am fine, sir. Thank you. Fine. Yes. Sir. Are you developing any symptoms with respect to COVID? Uh, not yet, sir. Fortunately. So our distance is safe. Okay. You can take off the mask. Okay. For the clarity of expression. Kunal, without making any explicit or implicit reference to your religion, region, caste, creed, or gender, introduce yourself to the panel in terms of the values and virtues that you hold. Okay. So my name is Kunal, and uh, Kunal means a bird with a beautiful eye. Uh, that it also means that one who sees positivity in everything. So I think I the name resounds with my personality. I see a lot of positive things and opportunities. And uh, where there are challenges, I as I have written in my diary that I like to challenge myself. So uh, I also uh, like to get past them and get the work done. And uh, sir, I am very uh, focused. And uh, when it comes to task at hand, and sometimes obsessive, which also affects my work-life balance. So sir, this is my introduction without any cast. Reference. What are the values that you hold as a human being, which you hold very dear to yourself, and you feel that you cannot compromise with those values even under stress or extreme kind of situations? Sir, uh, I value human life, so human rights is the value which I cannot compromise. And uh, sir, uh, the uh, uh, respect to women and women, uh, uh, women in, and uh, the uh, uh, the value of uh, secularism. The value of treating every religion equally and every human equally, so that is human rights. And uh, sir, this is this. Thank you. Okay, Kunal, you said that you you have a lot of respect for women. Yes, sir. Right, and it's a very dear value to you. Yes, sir. So I was just going through your DAF, dear. Um, you mention a certain amount as a annual income of your father. Yes, sir. But your mother's annual income reads zero. Yes, sir. Uh, she happens to be a housewife or a homemaker, as yes, you like to call it. Yes, sir. What do you feel there? Should we attach a monetary value to care services as well? And should UPSC also include it as a form of entry in the DAF? What are your views? Yes, sir, definitely. Uh, the uh, motherly care uh, or any care should be given value. Uh, but sir, uh, the issue with that is it is difficult to quantify. How can you quantify the love of a mother for her family? So that I think the uh, question which UPSC asks in DAF is the uh, amount for which the income you have filed your income tax. So unless and until we find a method to quantify that value, uh, I don't think it is the right idea to for UPSC to. Can you suggest any methodology by keeping the emotional aspect also in mind? by which you can have a qualitative analysis of the services that the homemakers give to their family. Their contribution is immense, Kunal, isn't it? Yes, sir. How can we attach a value, if not a monetary value, there must be some sort of appreciation and reward for any kind of work because that is human right. Yes, sir. Isn't it, Kunal? Yes, sir. And you hold it very dear. Yes, sir. So can you highlight a methodology or can you suggest a mechanism by which we can uphold that? Sir, a mathematical mechanism? Any mathematical mechanism not necessarily attached to mathematics or statistics yes. so i think the uh, if we uh, want to look it in the numerical form i think the income of the entire family so the majority part of that uh, is only possible because of the support of the homemaker in my case my mother so i think uh, more than 50 percent of the income of the family can be uh, attached value but see the emotional part i think uh, it cannot be quantified because uh, the expression of emotion and the feeling of emotion is different for different people. So people might feel a certain emotion but may not be able to express it. So I don't think it is a fair way to quantify it. Okay. Kunal, you come from Maharashtra. Yes, sir. And Maharashtra is passing through a terrible time as yes, far as coronavirus is concerned. Yes, sir. If you are the chief secretary of the Maharashtra government, suppose you happen to be yes, the chief secretary, tell me three steps that you will take to tackle this kind of crisis situation and in order of priority. Yes, sir. So the number one step is to test and trace and then treat. So I would uh, intensify the testing program and also the tracing mechanism which is uh, seen to be lacking in Maharashtra. 
and number two is sir i would ramp up the vaccination uh, which is being conducted so i would uh, open up the vaccination to a more wider group and uh, number three is uh, sir i would uh, uh, the curfew which has been implemented so i would uh, advise all the police officers to make the curfew more strict and the law and order uh, to uh, and peop appeal to the people to uphold the curfew and for their own benefit so these three steps sir i think what are your views with respect to lockdown as a methodology to curb the spread of the virus and social transformation as a methodology to curb the spread of the virus if you are given the choice to choose one which will you choose and why sir i would choose a combination of both because i think social a combination of both is an ideal situation there yes, sir i'm saying that if you have to sometimes in the bureaucracy you have to make a choice in such a way where you have to forego one or the other value yes sir. so definitely there are two values attached to these methodologies yes, sir. i'm asking you that if suppose the resources that you have or the amount of time that you have at your disposal is only sufficient to implement any one of them and not both of them because maybe social transformation will take a lot yes, of sir. time to showcase its result yes sir but if suppose you have to means there are costs involved in both these methods so which costs you are bear to you are ready to bear more that's my question that if it is a lockdown as a methodology to curb the spread of the coronavirus or any kind of a yes, virus sir. or is will it be a social transformation in terms of behavioral change mostly yes yes sir i think here the uh, the value of human life is most important so other values of liberty and freedom can be foregone for the sake of human life so i would prefer the lockdown method if the virus is deadly one Okay, Deepak. So, Kunal, you just mentioned about your way means that you uh, you will be considering when you are dealing with a problem like coronavirus as far as Maharashtra is concerned. You know the the way this coronavirus is devastating Maharashtra. Yes. So, we all know that vaccinating program is only for the forty five years or above. So, yes. is this the correct way of vaccinating people or? what do you think about when you think about the metropolitan cities like mumbai delhi is where most of the people are young yes, sir. what are your views about that? sir i think it is a correct way to go about it because uh, the people who are 45 are the uh, most vulnerable to the virus and uh, so uh, it is a correct way to go about it and sir because if we open it for everybody then uh, the uh, young, younger people would come uh, come to take the vaccines first and that would leave the more more vulnerable behind so i think uh, this is the most optimal strategy to uh, to uh, protect the death of or to avoid the death of people so that i'm asking about the working age group means yes. those who are employed and those who are earning for their family those who are always in contact and they are most vulnerable as far as uh, coming there in contact with the virus is concerned yes. so can they be given the priority along with this what the government is following yes sir uh, they can be given a priority but our distribution system is not up to that mark because after you take the vaccine you have to observe people for 30 minutes so there is a limited uh, number of patients you can vaccinate in a particular in one particular day and also there are limited distribution centers so i think with the current infrastructure the policy of the government is up to the mark so as i can see in your daf you are a lover of different cultures yes sir you try to explore them yes sir. so in your opinion what is the importance of culture which will help you in serving better to the country and the zone your cadre sir uh, culture uh, in the most simplest terms is the way of life so understanding the way of life of the people i am serving would uh, help me understand their values uh, their priorities for example the priorities of people in mumbai and people in a tier 3 city are completely different so i think by understanding that i would be uh, more apt to cater to their demands and their requirement so i think that is the importance of understanding their culture sir okay so you know the meaning of integrity yes sir so understanding culture as far as understanding culture is concerned you think integrity is somewhere very important in that yes sir integrity uh, of the people or of integri my integrity integrity of you as a civil servant yes sir uh, integrity is uh, really important because of the Uh, thoughts i have and the actions i take uh, are has to be in tune so that can be that can only happen if i am uh, i have the value of integrity so i think yes sir it is important to serve the people if 
the situation comes to you where you are told to sacrifice your integrity for something which is good so are you ready for that situation where you are told to sacrifice your integrity for the benefit of you know the larger section of the district so that will depend from situation to situation so integrity can be compromised Yes, sir. If the if a larger question of human life is concerned, then it, my personal integrity can be compromised. I would just like to interject at this point. Now, think of a situation that uh, you have apprehended a terrorist, yes, and who is about to detonate a large number of bombs yes. that will take the entire city for a ride. Yes, sir. yes. But your personal value says that under no circumstances you will fire a bullet. without giving that person the right to speak in his or her defense it means you are not willing to violate the principles of natural justice under any circumstances what will you do if you can take forward sir sir if he is about to detonate the bomb then i would shoot him sir so you will sacrifice yes sir your integrity yes sir for the, for saving the entire city hmm. so kunal yes sir. Kunal, you are fond of traveling, right? Yes, sir. Tell me some places you have traveled and you have loved. Sir, I have been traveling since my school. I have been to Japan. I have been to Europe. I have been to Middle East, uh, Dubai, and I have been to Southeast Asia. Have I... you been to UP? UP, sir. I have been to Lucknow, yes, sir. Lucknow, yes, sir. Last year. You must have heard about Allahabad. Yes, sir. And the name has been recently changed to Prayagraj. Yes, sir. What do you prefer, Allahabad or Prayagraj? Sir, uh, I prefer the name given by the current name, Allah uh, Prayagraj. Okay, so you prefer Prayagraj. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, tell me something about cuisine of Maharashtra. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, the most uh, cuisine of Maharashtra includes a lot of uh, jaggery-based product because uh, jaggery is pr- uh, prominent crop in Maharashtra. So, puran poli is a jaggery is a crop. Jaggery is the byproduct of sugar cane, sir. So, sugar cane is an important crop. So. uh so puran poli is one of the uh, important cuisines and sir uh, since uh, nagpur has a maratha uh, maratha maratha heritage so there is a lot of spicy food and uh, maharashtra is also a, a famous state for horticulture so grapes and wine as we know nashik is the wine capital of the country so wine spicy food and we also have a konkan uh, konkan coast tell, tell me any famous wines of nashik so there, there is a sula sula is a brand there and there are A white wine for example chenin blanc and red wines you have merlot chardonnay okay uh, as sir has asked you about uh, the contribution of mother or a woman yes sir in uh, home making so are you aware of any study conducted by government for quantifying the contribution of women in the family sorry sir i am not aware you are not mm-hmm. sir has touched upon topic of covid 19 and uh, the lockdown measures yes. being uh, taken by the government yes sir do you think that these lockdown measures are creating more inequality yes sir i think i do think that it is creating more inequality uh, because uh, the uh, investors or the top 1% who have invested their money their uh, investments have uh, the, their investments are still protected but the daily wage earners who live on day to day basis are losing their livelihood so the uh, the rich is getting richer and the poor are getting poorer and uh, i think yes sir there is uh, this lockdown is promoting inequality but at the same time i also think that it is also saving a lot of lives okay but uh, in lives and livelihood you will go for lives yes sir don't you think livelihood will be compromised and if li- uh, livelihood of poor people is jeopardized it will automatically compromise their lives yes sir So, but lockdown is a temporary. So, it is a catch twenty two switch situation. Yes, sir. So, lockdown is a temporary measure, and uh, I think uh, human body is uh, designed to stay hungry for over a month. But uh, if the virus enters and it kills you, then there is no point of a livelihood. So, I think lives are preferred over livelihood. Okay. You you have a hobby or interest of uh, reading non fiction books. Yes, sir. Tell me any one good author, sir, uh, I, which you have read. I am recently fond of Robert Greene and his books, The Forty Eight Laws of Power, The Laws of Human Nature, and Mastery. So I have read those books. Define in two lines this book. Sir, uh, this book deals with uh, how to handle social interactions and where there is power involved. Power does not mean authoritative power, but power is the way to convince the other person to get your job done. So 
uh, how to handle the laws of social interaction is the primary basis of the book sir. Okay. Have you heard about poor economics? Poor economics? Yes. yes. Sorry. Is it a, not of the book sir? It is a book. No sir. You are not aware of it. It is a book by Esther Duflo and Abhishek, Abhijit Banerjee. Yes, I am Nobel Prize winner. aware about the authors but not about the book. Not about the book. Yes. In that poor economics, uh, the authors write that we need, we need innovative measures. If we want uh, proper implementation of government schemes, yes, sir. what are your views on that? What kind of innovative measures we need for proper implementation of government schemes? So I think for proper implementation of government schemes, we need to plug the leakages which uh, happen, uh, for example, in the PDS and uh, in subsidy transfer. So I think the technology, the jandhan. I am talking about the nudging. Yes, People sir. are not willing to accept the benefit yes, sir. due to their own biases, prejudices, yes, sir. mainly in tribal areas. Yes, sir. So, how do we nudge them? Sir, by, uh, this is a concept of behavioral economics where uh, you give certain incentives to uh, change the behavior of the people you want, in this case the tribals. So, by offering the right incentives and focusing on the behavioral aspect of the change, I think that can work to nudge people towards uh, so, uh, social benefits. Okay, Kunal, I was just going through your uh order of preferences for zones yes, sir. and in that I see that the first preference goes to zone 3. Obviously Maharashtra happens yes, to sir. be your uh, home state so no wonder that you have given it as the yes, first sir. option. But I want to know the reason why you have opted for Chhattisgarh as the last, the reason for it. Sir, uh, Chhattisgarh, uh, Chhattisgarh compared to Maharashtra and the other states in the zone is a small state and it is a uh, forested area. So I would not like to compromise the forest for development in that case. If I was an IFS, Indian Forest Service officer, I would have preferred Chhattisgarh. And uh, so the another reason being that uh, other three states, I think are more closer to Maharashtra being the part of Maratha empire and the language of Marathi and Gujarati is almost same and Marathi and Madhya Pradesh is same. Chhattisgarh is, I think a little different. So that is one of the reasons. Why you want to become a civil servant? Sir, uh, I... Uh, Tell me the real reason. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, the real reason being I like the diversity that the job offers. In mechanical engineering, I will be restricted to the core branch of being a mechanical engineer. But in uh, if I join the civil services, I, have, I can explore the different opportunities with the job offers. And uh, according to my aptitude, I can uh, enhance my career in, the, in any particular field. So, I think... That's that your personal interest in yes, being sir. a civil servant. Yes, sir. How will you contribute to the nation by being a civil servant? Mm -hmm. If you become a civil servant, yes, suppose sir. you qualify and become an IS officer, an IPS, how will you contribute to the nation? What will be your contribution? Sir, my contribution would be, sir, uh, it would, uh, I would uh, do my job with, uh, I would try to excel at my job and if I uh, do that job properly and then I think that would be an immense contribution. Will you serve the politicians or the people? So, I will serve the people of India. Definitely. Yes, sir. And suppose, Kunal, that there are two groups of people, one very affluent and well-to-do and one very impoverished. Which section of people require your service more? That will depend upon the situation I am in. Suppose, I am giving you the situation, yes, one is very affluent and well-to-do. It means it can take care of your, its health, its education and other requirements which are necessary for making life qualitatively better. Yes, and the other section is relatively or you can say absolutely impoverished. Yes, Under this situation, which group of people will require your service more? So, I think both groups of people will uh, no, require If you more. have to choose one, dear. Sir, it, it would be a difficult choice because it would depend upon what kind of help I am Okay, offering. can you tell me this, that if... Uh, one place where the human indicators are not so good, the development indicators, it means that place is facing more developmental deficit. Yes. Sir. Can you say so? And when I look at all these four states, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat and Chhattisgarh, the developmental deficit is maximum in Chhattisgarh. Yes. Sir. And development should not always, like you said, that it depends. So, similarly, development not always translates into deforestation. 
yes sir development could be with respect to human development as well yes sir which will not require any clearance of a virgin forest or a natural patch yes sir here so like have you heard recently about the naxal attack yes sir in bijapur yes sir don't you think that naxal violence is one of the major challenges of for chatisgarh yes sir okay yes. and if you go as a civil servant say high serving civil servant as in the administration or in the police administration as the case may be you can contribute a lot because you hold human value human life as a very dear value you cannot compromise with that yes sir so chatisgarh is on the ladder of development you can say as far as these four states are concerned chatisgarh is at the bottom yes sir that is statistically proven at yes, least sir. so don't you think under such circumstances chatisgarh should have been the first preference if not the first because say maharashtra is your home state at least the second one sir i am happy to serve in any state of uh, india but uh, this was about the preferences i would have so if given chatisgarh i would happily go and serve the people there so there is no particular biasness about it no state. sir okay, okay uh, kunal just touching upon the topic of nationalism what do you think what breeds nationalism in this country and have you heard about the term urban nexels yes sir to what degree you agree to that term and uh, how do we defeat nationalism yes, sir. sir the absence of governance or government to the to these tribal peoples uh, tribal people is one of the reason that feeds nationalism uh, because uh, rather than following the uh, policies of the government or following the mandate of the government these people turn to the nationals so they see their leaders in nakhsals that rather than the government uh, local mps or mlas so that is one of the reason and sir the i do not agree with the term urban nakhsals uh, because uh, the intellectuals who are against the government and who try to uh, st state their views which is a fundamental right are termed as urban nakhsals so i do not agree with it and sir uh, to uh, to address this problem i think uh, in, uh, i think prioritizing them is one of the a key because uh, cr uh, creating policies which are tuned to them for example uh, chatisgarh uh, one is of in chatisgarh op choudhary has created schools for uh, tribal uh, tribal children and uh, under the scheme of nanne parinde so i think uh, making scheme a uh, social welf uh, welfare scheme and prioritizing them for uh, these uh, tribal peoples i think that would help sir okay uh, you know nationalism or any such kind of ideologies it draws its subject matter from the writings of karl marx yes, mostly sir. or mao yes, so sir. it is communist extreme leftist yes sir something like that do you think that communism as an ideology is against secularism of the indian brand because marx said that religion is the opium of the masses yes sir and the communists call for a complete separation and there is a kind of uh, animosity towards religion yes, that sir. is very much evident in countries like china or north korea yes, in north korea if you are held with a bible then you face penal action yes sir similarly if you go to stalin's russia yes, you see the same kind of development but indian secularism is more pluralism it is coexistence cohabitation so do you think communism as an ideology is against the indian brand of secularism what are your views yes sir i do certainly think so because the indian brand of secularism uh, is different from the western secularism where there is complete separation of state and religion but we respect and give opportunity to all religion but communism is more attuned to the western form of secularism rather than the indian form of secularism so therefore yes sir it is against the indian form of secularism. so can capitalism be an alternative in india's case if we are rejecting communism on that ground with respect to secularism not with respect to everything else dear yes, so with respect to secularism can capitalism be an alternative to communism as far as secularism is concerned as a practice in this country sir i think uh, uh, neither capitalism nor uh, communism but a middle path can be uh, found in case of india as with secularism we did not follow the western model of secularism nor the communist model so i think a uh, market socialism form of secularism can be implemented in india sir okay kunal uh, i see in your daf that uh, you have played football at inter hostel level yes sir and i hope that is one of your areas of interest then sir i played football but i no longer follow it i follow formula 1 yes sir. okay okay you tell me kunal that are you aware of the isl 
Indian Super League. Yes, sir. It's a football tournament. Yes, sir. It is almost equivalent to IPL, at least in content. Yes, sir. And in theory. But in practical sense, there is a wide gap between these two tournaments. Why <coughs> football as a sport has not progressed in India? When you look at the antiquity of the sport, it is much older than cricket in India. Yes, sir. What is the reason why football has not progressed so much? Do we lack the basic skills in football or there is something else? What are your views? Sir, I think uh, cricket uh, as a sport is more institutionalized in India because there are uh, major cities have major clubs. For example, Mumbai has Mumbai Cricket Club which and Ranji trophies, there are various tournaments. So, there is a form of institution to the sport. And uh, sir, the sport is also commercialized. So, the advertisements, uh, the, there is a lot of revenue and money involved in the sport. And uh, the common people, uh, I think, understand cricket as a sport better. Uh, these are the reasons. And sir, in case of football, uh, India fails to attract talent from uh, the ground level. So, therefore, the uh, Indian, even the Indian football team is, uh, does not perform well in uh, World Cups. So, I think the lack of institution and uh, the lack of uh, profit attached to the sport is one of the reasons why football is not uh, up to the mark so with cricket. lack of institutionalization is a major reason why football has not spread to the extent like cricket has. Yes, sir. Um, are you aware of a club called uh, Mamadin Sporting? Have you heard about Salgaokar Goa or yes. Mohan Bagan? Have I have heard, heard about, about these Mohan clubs? Bagan. Mohan Bagan, I have yeah, heard about. Mohan Bagan. Yes, sir. Do you know the, how old is Mohan Bagan? Yes, or sir. the club culture in football. Yes, sir. When we talk about institutionalization, formation of clubs is a major aspect of such institutionalization. Yes, sir. And the club culture in cricket is not very old. Yes, Recently, sir. we see the clubs. Yes, but priorly, it was state-sponsored boards. Yes, sir. Which selected teams, which played for a state. Yes, sir. Or a city, like the Mumbai city or the Bengal state. Yes, sir. Do you understand that? But the club culture is extremely old as far as football is concerned. Yes, then sir. how can you say, Kunal, that institutionalization is a reason for the failure of football to spread because football has more deep-rooted institutions? Yes. Sir. What makes you say so? Sir, so these uh, I think these clubs, uh, Mohan Bagan, for example, and the other clubs which you mentioned are on the uh, are the for creation of the British. And they were during the British times and these are restricted to only a few cities, for example, Bengal, Mumbai and Goa, which were major British trading towns. Uh, but cricket as a sport is widespread throughout India, sir. So, I think that is the network and the reach of the sport is much more than football. And also the commercial value, uh, which is derived from uh, events like IPL, uh, I think those make this sport more famous, cricket more famous than football. Kunal, you have done mechanical engineering yes, sir. from IIT Bombay. Yes, sir. If you are given the power to make two changes yes, sir. to how IIT deals with its students, yes, sir. what changes will they be? Sir, excuse me, can I wipe my face? Yeah, yeah, sure. Sweating. Would you require a water? No, 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 sir. Thank you. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, IIT as an institution is uh, one of the premier institutions in the country, but it also has its certain drawbacks. For example, the uh, culture of research in IIT is lacking and uh, the culture of original research is lacking because there are various infrastructural constraints and the funding of these institutions uh, the, depends upon donors rather than any institutionalized form of funding from the government. So, donor based funding, lack of research culture and uh, the, these two are one of the uh, reasons and there is also this uh, industry academia gap where the research is not attuned to the industry. So, there is no commercialization of any research which is being done in IITs. So, there is no incentives to do research. So, I think if we fix this, uh, then IITs can uh, become the Stamfords and MITs of uh, India. Are you in favor of welcoming foreign in universities in India? Are you welcoming that step? to invite foreign universities in India, like if we just look at the top 200 or even 100 universities, we barely find one or two Indian university or sometimes some years they are totally missing. Even premier institutions like IITs or IIM fail to make uh, entry into such coveted list. Yes, are you in favor of welcoming foreign universities in India? Yes, sir. I am in favor of welcoming because uh, 
the uh, because that that will lead to two advantages number one is the dissemination of culture of research which is lacking so that will be like the pivot point around which all the institutions will do their research and number two there is a lack of uh, seats for example they have to expand iits from 8 to 23 so this will lead to more enrollment and the gross enrollment ratio in higher education would increase so yes sir, i am in favor of but the dear the problem here is the fee Yes. The fee of a premier institution, say for example, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, is almost 25 times what an individual has to pay in a premier institution like IIT Powai or yes, sir. anything. Clear? <coughs> so, from where the average Indian will get that much amount of money? Should the government subsidize the education then? Or should uh, the banks expand their credit mechanisms? So I think it should be the combination of both because government can subsidize by offering scholarships rather than subsidizing it for everyone. They can offer scholarships based on merit. So that can be one thing and banks can improve the credit culture by offering student loans not on not on their parents but on students who can repay them later after getting a job. So I think a mixture of both which has been followed in MITs uh, and I think the mixture of both can help uh, even the middle class student get admission into a foreign university. Okay Deepak. Sure. So, as I can see, Kunal, that you studied French language when you were in 10th standard. Yes, sir. From 8th to 10th, I did 2 years of French. Yes. So, can you tell me something about the French Revolution, that how it changed the world? Yes, and sir. Means, what is the legacy of French Revolution and how uh, this 1857 revolt of India, how would you like to connect this rebellion or I would say this Sepoy mutiny with the French Revolution? So, the French Revolution led to the destruction of aristocratic class in France and it gave rise to a sort of people's movement and a people's leader, Napoleon Bonaparte was born. And in 1857, uh, the uh, Indian working class tried to do the same thing and a leader of Khan Bahadur, Zafar Khan was born but unfortunately could not be as successful as Napoleon. So, I think the uh, clash of the common people with the authority or the aristocratic class is the common theme of French Revolution in 1857, mutiny of 1857. Okay, so, uh, it will be correct to say that the lack of leadership is the only reason behind the failure of 1857 revolt, providing that how it was so much famous among the people as they were doing such a rebellion for the first time. So, I think the lack of a leader and the lack of spread of the revolt is are the two reasons because the revolt was mainly focused in north, northern India and it was a more regressive revolt where they wanted to go back to the Mughal emperor whereas the French revolution wanted to move towards democracy. So I think uh, democracy and uh, rights for the people. So I think these are the two main differences where uh, 1857 mutiny was more, uh, more orthodox in its uh, nature and the French revolution was much more liberal. So I think these are the two. Okay. So, your mother tongue is Marathi. Yes, right? sir. So, can you tell me something about uh, the Janan Pith Award? Who was the first Marathi scholar to win this award for Marathi language? Sorry, sir. I am not aware. No problem. That's all for my side. Yes, sir. Kunal, uh, in Maharashtra, uh, Vidarbha region is facing so much problem. Yes, sir. As a bureaucrat, uh, what solution do you offer? Yes, sir. So, Vidarbha region is, a, is facing the problem of farmer suicide because of drought. Uh, so, I think the main reason is the uh, cropping pattern which is followed in Vidarbha as, uh, as it is a rainfall deficient region but still because of the commercial uh, commercialization of agriculture, the water intensive crop of sugarcane is being produced in the Vidarbha region. So, that sucks up a lot of ground water and the farmer has to uh, intensify the use of fertilizers. So, that, that leads to a debt trap by the farmer. So, I think promoting dry dry land farming and promoting pulses which are and uh, zero budget natural farming which are uh, uh, less input intensive but provide subsistence as well as income to the farmers uh, would be one of my major steps sir in Vidarbha region. Zero budget natural farming is actually a zero budget or it is just a misnomer? Sir the net budget is zero because the inputs required and the profits attained are matched. So, I think the net, uh, net budget is zero but it is not uh, Literally zero budget farming. So yes. Okay. Do you prefer creamy layer concept? Uh, that do you believe that creamy layer concept should be introduced in SC, ST reservation as well? Yes, sir. 
so i do believe that creamy layer should be introduced because the whole point of reservation was to benefit uh, the last man in the row the most least uh, the least uh, uh, the most disadvantageous person in the category but uh, as we know the trends are that uh, the rich and the economically affluent class from sc and sts tend to get uh, uh, benefits of reservation from generation to generation so i think yes sir i am in support of creamy layer what is anamaya initiative launched recently by rom sorry sir i am not aware you love challenges right yes sir then you must have uh, you must you should have uh, northeast as your first preference zone of preference if you love challenges what i believe is ki you love comfort zone and that is why uh, you go for maharashtra gujarat madhya pradesh as your preference first preference. sir uh, sir i do love comfort and uh, i don't mind uh, serving in the northeast at all it was just a matter of preference and choice therefore i uh, filled maharashtra and gujarat but if given any state in india i would uh, serve with equal enthusiasm and so enlighten me about uh, what challenges do you love sir uh, i li like to challenge myself physically and uh, mentally also and i love uh, challenges in general sir uh, Don't you think people who love so much of challenges they jeopardize health of their team? You are an IPS officer. You love challenges, and uh, despite of knowing that uh, there is a high risk involved, and with only three, four of your team members, you go into an ambush. You might jeopardize uh, life of your team member if you love challenges. Yes, sir. Sir, I think uh, there is a difference between uh, being uh, courageous and uh, uh, no being. Uh, Uh, and uh, jeopardizing your entire team so i think uh, challenges sir i love challenges but i also like to think before what i'm getting into so uh, i would not uh, risk myself or the life of my team uh, by going into an ambush Just a small interjection yeah. uh kunal how would you define courage what is courage to you sir courage is the ability to get going in spite of fear to keep on going in spite of fear kunal uh, what are your views on new education policy don't yes. you think it is just an old wine in new water if 1986 policy is not successful in india what is the guarantee that the recent education policy will be successful sir i am in favor of uh, new education policy uh, because it provides a element of vocational education and it is also providing uh, the uh, vocational education has already been included in skill in india mission yes sir so what is the difference there? sir uh, this will provide an institutional structure where vocational education will become a part of daily academic life of the student and so that uh, is absent in the present education and the promotion of mother tongue i think will help uh, raise the general uh, uh, academic standards of people because uh, young children especially in rural areas uh, tend to understand better when the education is given in their mother tongue compared to english or hindi so i think so you are in favor of mother tongue education Sir, up to uh, pre-primary or primary level, yes, sir. Up to primary level, yes, sir. Oh. Okay, Kunal, uh, you are already selected in the Indian Railway Traffic Service. Yes, sir. Okay. Kunal, what are the challenges that Indian railways are facing? Yes, sir. Name three challenges and put them into priority, yes, and then tell me <coughs> solution for every challenge. Yes, sir. Go ahead. so the number one challenge indian railways is facing is the operating ratio because the cost to earn profit is very high the number two, second challenge is the infrastructural issues and the th third challenge is the consumer and the overall uh, passenger experience so the solution for the uh, number one challenge of uh, low operating ratio is to move towards privatization and by privatizing on a pilot basis uh, we can uh, earn profits uh, the government can earn profits by reducing its cost the second the solution to the infrastructural issue is again by introducing new technologies and upgrading the existing infrastructure and creating the new infrastructure like the dedicated freight corridor so that the logistic cost involved with freight is reduced from 14% to around 6 to 7% in the advanced countries and the third challenge of consumer experience can be enhanced when uh, certain bottlenecks like the IRCTC website uh, and the catering which is provided the on time arrival of the trains uh, i think if that is fixed then the consumer experience will be enhanced so these three challenges just a supplementary question to that kunal you talked about 
or you talked about the privatization of railways on a pilot basis or something yes, like sir. that. Why privatization of railways is such a difficult task when you see it from the political lens. While you see the road transport and even the civil aviation, privatization in these two sectors have not been so challenging. Okay, I can understand the civil aviation, only a few section of the population is affected by that. But what about road transports? In fact, if you look at the pool of people that the road transports are catering to, and I'm talking about road transport at every level, national, state, district, and even rural roads. Yes, sir. Their privatization has not been such a big challenge. But when it comes to privatization of railways, or say, think of establishment of a parallel railway network, yes, parallel to the public network. Yes, sir. Why this is politically so difficult? Why do you think? What are the challenges? So, because uh, railways, uh, as we know, railways were built by the British to connect even the smallest of small towns for their commercial interest and that legacy has continued. And railways is, as a, the prioritization is difficult because of the profit making nature of the, or the loss making nature of the railways because it connects many small stations where the consumer traffic is not enough to uh, carry the entire train and make profit from it. So, uh, but in case of uh, airlines, sir, it only connects the major cities where there are, where there is enough traffic to make profit. So, I think this is one of the reason and the railway also has a certain social welfare uh, uh, basis. So, I think that is. So, it is the welfare angle you yes, which is connected. That's why you want. Okay, Kunal, are you aware what is the GDP of your district? Sorry, sir, I'm not aware of the exact I'm number. Aware of it. Okay. Yeah, you want to ask me? Are you aware with the contract farming? Yes, sir. What is it? So, contract farming is when a uh, industry or a company uh, is in uh, makes a uh, is in a contract with a farmer to, for the supply of its raw material. For example, a chip company can have a contract with a potato farmer so that the quality is uh, ensured for the company and the price is ensured for the farmer. So, it is one of the future contracts. So, is this contract farming going to benefit the Indian farmers or? Is it going to take the livelihoods of many farmers as they are thinking? So, I think if it is implemented in a proper way and if there is uh, tribunals to address the grievances associated with the contracts, so I think it will benefit the farmers. Sir. So I believe you are aware with the farmer laws which are passed. Yes, sir. So, what are your views with the recent farmer protests which is going around Delhi? Yes, sir. sir, I am in favor of the farm laws, uh, but uh, the farmer protest. I think there has been certain uh, uh, certain miscommunication or spread of fake uh, false information and the government I think uh, needs to do more as an outreach program to make people aware of the um, basic nature of the farm laws. So if people, if the farmers are more aware of the intent of the farm laws and uh, if uh, measures are taken to curb the misspread of information, I think uh, even farmers will understand that these laws are in their benefit. So, so, what is their major cause means why they are protesting? So, I think the protests are politically motivated and uh, because of the political nature of the issue and also the spread of misinformation, I think these two are one of the reasons. So, you now. think they are motivated by political parties? Yes, sir. That's all. Okay, good. So, are you uh, aware with the Amber Box subsidy? Yes, sir. So, uh, if I ask you to Tell me the similarities between the Amber Box subsidy and the MSP which the government of India offers. Yes, sir. What are they? Sir, Amber Box subsidy is uh, the classification uh, by, by, so by the World Trade Organization where uh, uh, the subsidies can be provided but there has to be a certain limit to it. So, the um, uh, minimum support price I think is uh, it is similar to an Amber Box subsidy, but we are only providing to a twenty, only providing to certain category of crops, and that to uh, up to a certain limit. So I think that subsidy is allowed under WTO, sir. Okay. So just a last question, and that this is out of the box. Yes, sir. I just wanted to ask that how the wheel, the invention of wheel, changed the world and how it brought a revolution to the human lives. So the invention of wheel changed the world because. Uh, mobility became uh, 
the reality and people because of the circular nature of the wheel less effort was required for people to push carts push goods and even push uh, the and it led to the development of transport as we know so i think uh, people got connected far away from far away lands because of the availability of transport so i think it uh, brought the civilization together and that led to the development of knowledge okay. so that's all from us did it help in extraction of uh, water wheel yes sir did it revolutionize the irrigation yes sir okay kunal uh, your uh, order of preference of service i was just going through that yes. and i see that uh, you have opted for indian police service as the second preference yes sir now this is a common thing in most of the dads that people go for ips as the second choice yes sir and mostly they are aspirants to the office of is yes sir and the failures go into the ips yes sir so do you think that ips as a cadre means the police is mostly responsible for law and order yes and you know law and order is imperative for growth and development so don't you think that highly motivated people who are dedicated for maintaining law and order or who have a general affinity towards law and order maintenance they should be given preference as ips officers and by keeping that in mind should we hold a parallel examination for the ips like we hold for the forest services yes, what sir. are your views yes sir i do think uh, that ips is different from the uh, other civil services which upsc offers so i think yes sir uh, like uh, forest services or like irms which has be recently been done by the government i think ips and other paramilitary services of crpf uh, can come together under one umbrella and a different examinations can be held sir okay uh, your option is geography yes sir um define the concept of a growth pole and differentiate it from growth center yes sir and uh, apart from the traditional growth poles in maharashtra tell me at least three potential growth poles yes sir so the growth pole is concept where the industrial and manufacturing activity is concentrated and that leads uh, to the uh, growth of a particular area and growth centers is when that growth and development is spread to other areas around it so that is growth center and the potential growth poles in maharashtra are the uh suburbs surrounding this uh, major cities for example thane is also a growth pole and uh, what is the product around which or service around which that that area can flourish economically sir thane is a, a important center for small and medium industries especially the textile industries so that i think and nasik for horticulture is can be a growth pole so potential growth hmm. pole and uh, sir other growth pole can be aurangabad uh for example because of the education it offers in the marathwada region so that service can be okay no you are not uh, thinking of developing the three growth poles along the uh, western coast sir no no growth pole in your eyes that is untouched on the western coast so i think the ratnagiri area is a growth pole which can be grown because of the elephants and mangoes and also the uh, fishing industry What is the child sex ratio of Maharashtra? Sorry, sir, I am not aware of the exact number. What is the population of Thane? So, population of Thane before division was fourteen lakhs. Now it is around eleven lakhs, sir. Eleven. Yes, sir. Okay. Tell me one idea of yours that uh, you will use to modernize the economy of Thane. Sir, uh, one idea being I would only one. sir economy of thane yes sir i would uh, clean up the uh, as thane is known as the city of lakes i would clean up the lakes to boost tourism in thane sir okay kunal thank you very much thank you sir it was nice interacting with you thank you sir. you can just wait for a few minutes and then we'll call you back for okay. the feedback thank you sir so kunal first your interview was good it was uh, decent and the overall feedback which uh, i feel that it was appropriate but there are few aspects here which i want to highlight see as far as your communication skills are concerned command over language vocabulary speaking skills all those kind of things you are good you are good in that but one area where you need to improve as far as your communication is concerned is the clarity of expression at times not in all questions in some questions it has happened 
that uh, you have not expressed what you wanted to say in the first go then later you clarify so that's one area work on that dear um, listening capacity is good confidence level because of that statement that you made that i understand that there can be extreme situations in the hall and there were sweats on your forehead so that does not speaks very well dear because it means that if there is a stress kind of situation and if you are charged like not all days will be good days in the bureaucracy and there can be a day when a civil servant senior to you will blast you often in full public glare do you understand that so you must be emotionally prepared for handling such kind of extreme situation so that's one area confidence level overall confidence is very good but the expression of it you can work on it a bit and uh, body posture because of that appears to be nervous for that moment so that's where you have to improve on your body language the eye contact was very good the posture of arms legs was decent facial expression was very polite pitch of voice was excellent so that's one thing that that is perhaps the best thing that i liked in your interview is that whatever you said any one of us i think and both members can agree with me that none of us had to say can you tell it again because of the reason that we do not hear it so the pitch of voice was excellent um your bio data related questions it means your dap related questions and you know it holds a lot of weight in the interview it was overall good but uh, related to your home district and home state you need to improve a bit on that and uh, mostly the current affairs related questions and very basic questions like a question what is the gdp of your state generally you should be aware of that kind of thing it is not necessary that you give a uh, exact figure but an approximation would be good and most of the times let me tell you here that it is not necessary that the board members might also be knowing the exact figure but they have the luxury of a phone in their hand they can just go like this so don't try to bluff at any moment but have a look at these features as well the gdp sex ratio because these are very uh, useless questions i understand but they are not to check your knowledge but to check your awareness which is a part of your personality uh with respect to civil services it means the choice of surveys cadre related kind of questions overall your answer were good except the question with respect to when i asked you why chatisgarh is your fourth choice okay i understand you have the full freedom but uh, many places you contradicted yourself like you like challenges and then maoism is a challenge and public service you value human life so human life is in jeopardy in those areas of backward region you understand that dear so prepare these areas more and the more you give the interviews the more you prepare and you see that these area would definitely flourish uh then finally as far as current affairs is concerned just keep a bit more track about some of the schemes of the government be it the farm bills or the naxal issue or um, i think there was one more question which was asked to you with respect to current affairs you handled more or less very well and uh, that's it let the other members talk to you then i'll disclose you about the marks so as far as the current affairs is concerned uh, kunal uh, the application of the current issues from indian prospect wahan pe thoda clarity ki zarurat hai aur baaki overall everything is good body posture is good dressing sense is nice so yahi pe ja rahe hain abhi to ha sir last year yahi pe na tha abhi is saal dekh good good theek hai no because good. it looks decent on me okay sir decent so bahut kuch aur baaki thoda home related जहां से हैं वहां पे थोड़ा सा आपको मेहनत करने की जरूरत है और इन टर्म्स ऑफ कल्चर एंड इफ यू आर मराठी इज योर मदर टंग इफ यू मेंशन इन दैट बिकॉज यू हैव मेंशन सो सो यू शुड बी अवेयर ऑफ इट प्लीज सम मराठी लिखिए लर्न अबाउट दिस यू इंपॉर्टेंट स्कॉलर्स इन मराठी सम इंपॉर्टेंट वर्क्स इन मराठी बिकॉज़ वन थिंग आई शो यू देयर देयर कैन बी क्वेश्चंस इन रिलेशन टू मराठी लिटरेचर दे एक्चुअली थिंग इज दैट they are not testing your knowledge as a sole said but it can make you nervous yes. no and if you are getting nervous the whole interview is going to be a false point are you agree with that yes sir ha to wahan pe thoda sa test everything is good not a big yes kunal uh, uh, your confidence was very good i like this and your communication your smile is 
the best. Okay. It is infectious. Infectious. <laughs> but one more thing I need to uh, highlight here is that smile is good, but uh, we should change it. Uh, the reason being that some questions are like uh, bit serious on a serious side. Yes, sir. this this I have an issue with. So, if you ask serious questions, sir, then you should avoid the smile to avoid it. Sir, it is not avoid, it is just flares up. I will try to avoid it. You will try. Yes, sir. Try. Okay. Uh, communication skill is good, as uh, the panel members have said. But uh, just take a small pause before shooting your answer. That will make your expression and answer more clear. The reason being, uh, when you speak, sometimes this uh, appears right in your <coughs> communication. It is the re, uh, it is because of you have not thought before. Yes. Right? Yeah, so, you have to think about it. Just two three seconds pause and then show your answer. It will be do more good. Body posture was perfect, uh, but the in later part of your interview, you were uh, seen to be a bit nervous. The one e event was that uh, sweating, Sweat. and the other event was I was observing your hand. Yes, okay, sir. a person who is nervous, he just uh, holds his hand too tight. Yes, yes. Yeah, so the panel member will get that. Okay. So, you have to lose pressure. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. okay. Another thing is why uh, a related question you have answered well. Just that ke you love challenges. So, they will obviously shoot that question. Ke if you love challenges, then uh, you should have succeeded as your first preference or not be as your first preference. So, I or the panel member would require more detailed answer, bit detailed. It was not satisfying. Not satisfying. The defense for the choice of cadre should be much more strong. Okay. You have the absolute freedom there to go about it, but uh, it should be more convincing. Okay. Like it should not raise eyebrows. And uh, work on current affairs. Current affairs, I ask you a question about Anamaya initiative. Yes, sir. That was in yesterday's newspaper. Okay. I will. Uh, so, work on that. I have skipped the questions on science, but uh, as you are an engineer, you might also ask that those questions related to quantum mechanics, string theory, whatever is going on around you. And uh, reservation stand was your very clear yes. as far as familiar uh, is concerned. That is good. You should maintain that. I like it. Uh, otherwise, uh, and uh, the hometown related question. You should be aware of the basic statistics like what is the population, what is the GDP, what is child sex ratio. Okay, sir. These are the basics. You should be aware. Okay. Overall, good. Anything you want to ask? Sir, how do I answer that uh, cadre question of Chhattisgarh? Why did I not prefer Chhattisgarh over Gujarat or Madhya Pradesh? See, what first, do? for Maharashtra, it's a no brainer. Yes, sir. That's your home state. But <laughs> you can say that. Uh, I am in a better position to understand the problem. But see, your DAF is so contradictory on the next page where you say you like challenges. Yes, so when you say that you are more culturally more closer, yes, that was your answer. Yes. That I am more culturally closer to the Gujarat and Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh and all. And on the second hand, you are saying you like challenges. So the best would be that, sir, uh, I am ready to serve in any part of India. Yes. And it was just a matter of choice. And I randomly, randomly, because without uh, billeting any kind of preference, I just preferred it. At that time, I felt that maybe this could be a right choice, yes. but I'm ready to serve any part. That sentence saved you. Okay. That I'm ready to serve. And there you understood that you are going on a wrong okay, track. Sir. And that's why you retracked yourself. And that was good. So the best thing is, and again, why you want to be a civil servant? This is the most important question, Kunal. And yes. Most of the aspirants they fail to explain this, have a good answer for it. And the answer should be very real. Yes. Yeah. One part of it was real, where you said that yes, it gives diversity, you, uh, all kind kind of things. But the best answer could be, it makes me happy. Yes. It will make me happy. And if you are happy, you can do anything. Do you understand that? All other defense can be given in defense of happiness. Yes, Do you understand that? And one more question, Kunal, with respect to the uh, optional yes, uh, as you growth center and growth goal. I know that you know about it. Yes, but are you satisfied with your definition? No, sir. Right? I could have done it. Better. Yes. It means you are not expecting such a kind of question yes, sir. most of the times. And again, when I ask you about the railways, 
the answer was very good comprehensive because you have prepared it well in hand yes yeah so you just jumped as other fact you just jumped over it yeah it did not take any time it would be good that if a question is asked for the time being you should lower your gaze a bit it is diplomatic distance so you should if your seniors are saying something to you should slightly lower your gaze but should not lost vision of the person so as to give the impression as if you are processing the information and okay. then raise your head politely and try to answer the person like this okay. and if it is a um, grave issue let's say for example that he asked about uh, the crisis with our country yes it's a grave issue it doesn't warrant a smile Yeah. Yes, sir. It warrants a concern on your face that it's a grave issue, and I want to do something substantial to uh, improve the conditions in that part of the state. Yes, sir. Okay. So just try to feel the issue. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. If you are realizing something, automatically the smile will go. Yes, sir. The issue is very simple. Smile is good here, and yes. you have a very good smile. <laughs> But the point is. You can smile. yes sir yeah. okay so there is no modulation in the facial expression that your voice is excellent okay so if you like if there is something important and if somebody there will be panel members who would smile yes. and i deliberately did that to you on many occasions okay. just to check that whether you can check your smile or not mm-hmm. so polite smile is always good but uh, extra magic smile all the time even on <laughs> A very serious, serious issues. It is not welcome. It's not necessary. See, um, there can be members who are very aged, and yes, they do not like it like very much yes, because they come from a different school of thought. Yes, sir. So, as far as this geography question is concerned, you must first highlight that it's a spatial concept and what is this. You yes, must also explain that first in very clear terms. Yes. And then you can highlight that if there are three growth centers or growth poles. You can highlight that these are the possible growth poles, but there can be other as well. And you should further ask questions. Like you asked me a question. Like I asked you the question that uh, name three potential growth poles. You are. You must further ask the question to that, and it will not. Uh, you can say annoy the members of the group. Yes, sir. In which part of Maharashtra? Yes. Should I tell? Or you are calling for the entire Maharashtra region? Mm-hmm. Then you should balance. The idea is to check that whether you are regionally biased or not. Okay. Sir. That was the intention. You understand that? Yes. And there was some degree of bias. Bias. Yes. Sir. You understand? That's why I asked you why you did not choose. So then you rectified and you said that mm-hmm. America also be for other concerns. Yes. Here, yeah, food processing would be a better, better yes. rather than a particular product. Yeah. Yes. So overall, uh, overall you are good, huh. very good, and uh, I think uh, the final marks that you get by I'm talking and averaging it out everything, and <laughs> considering the factors that you are in the comfort of a known UPSC. Yes, so UPSC that day is all very different. Yes. Yeah. So your levels of anxiety, nervousness, everything would be different. Even confidence would be brimming on you. Yes. So considering all those factors, I feel that you are in the range of one eighty-six or one eighty-five to one eighty. Yes. Excellent marks. Here, yes. What was your marks last year? One eighty four. Yes. Sir. So it needs to be some improvement. Here. Yes. Sir. Okay. So that is very. Important. I guarantee you, just work on your spine, hmm. on grave issues, and uh, work on uh, local questions. Okay. The last night is coming. You are two hundred plus. Yes. Okay. Then you can have your yes. This is my feedback. You can have this one. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.